hello and welcome to another video with king tech coding clinic and in this tutorial i'm going to walk you through step by step how you can create this classic and amazing data entry form using ms excel vba as you can see you are not even seeing the worksheet okay so we can add data from here we can update data we can delete data we can search data from here we can reset the form we can check duplicate data entries to make sure that each and every member in this particular database that is captured using this data form have their own unique IDs and there wouldn't be duplicate data entries. So we've taken care of that. So let's delve right into that. Now, welcome back and consider subscribing to the channel if this is the first time you visiting this channel and if you are a returning subscriber you are welcome back home now let's see how this amazing form works before we go ahead to begin creation from scratch i'm going to explain the codes for you to understand so that you can use that experience and knowledge learned from here to develop your own forms the way you want them to be designed you can do that all by yourself after watching this video so stick around till the end of this video the video is going to be in two parts so that we don't prolong it so the first part is going to be captured with just the uh, introduction of the various text boxes how to add update delete search and then the next part is going to be how to add this list box and then other <coughs> sorry other buttons now let's see how this form works so to start with let's say we would want to add new entries okay so now like i said you can't see the workbook okay but it is there to show the workbook you just click on this button and then you can see this is the database okay so to hide it you can call it hide it from here as well okay so basically that is how it works and i'm going to show you how to do all this it's very simple straightforward and fun so to start with let's say i would want to add another person inside of this data. So start with you can see that i already have the serial number to be number four because i already have three people entered into the data so to start with i'll enter another person from here let's say john boy then the gender it's male then i will choose the date of birth from here from the calendar then the id the staff id okay we assume that these are teachers i use this feature here to help you or to, for you to learn how to generate random numbers to use them as ids and i'll be showing you how that works and then you get the registered number frame so let me just enter some random numbers then the email so i'll say jb at yahoo.com and then the phone number so let me say 0203 so once i'm done i would want to add the picture so i just browse through my folders and grab a picture from here and go back from here let's see this and then we go to this Boom. then let me grab this picture for him there we go and grab this one so you can see so once i'm done i'll just click on save and then you can see that it says what staff id already exists please click generate id to choose another staff id now let me show you what they are talking about here and click on ok and show you the workbook now you look at the workbook this column in here holds the various staff ids so but it says that the staff id already exists now let's confirm that it is true the second person is having the same staff id that is sid 755237 the same thing here SID 755237 so how do we do how do we fix this just click on generate again and then it will generate another one for you so let's try and it says it's already existing so let's try generating another one again so let's save now so you can see that it has been saved so with this there wouldn't be duplicate data entries or you having two people having the same ID if taking care of that that doesn't work here so perfect so now we can search by just clicking on the person here and then just search from here we can update so let's say that the he is not actually okay let's say the email address is not at yahoo.com uh, let's say gmail.com so we just confirm that gmail.com so once you are done with the changes click on update so data updated so now if we should search for him again instead of yahoo you have gb at gmail.com okay we can delete data as well so once we are done search let's say i would want to delete the second person i'll search search for the second person here and then click on delete and then you have him deleted so perfect and that is how 
this form works like i said you can hide the workbook from here and just view only the form okay so i'm going to show you step by step how to do this from scratch now let's close this and then delve right into that one we show the workbook from here and this. you can call it launch the workbook from here and then enter your data as you view the data entries on the worksheet article so we can close this now and save the workbook click on ok so perfect all right so now to start with let's create our folder where we can store our file inside so we go to new folder then let's give it a name uh, data entry okay for short data entry then just open the folder inside the folder right click and go to new here and you just choose excel work sheets okay so you just give it a name data entry as well whatever name you would want to put to it let's double press the enter key to launch the file so now let's go to file go to save as here choose the folder on which you've just created this now let's change it to macro enable workbook so this one choose this and click on save so we can then close this now now let's delete the one with the you can see the first one which is a macro enable web that is the excel dot excel sm and then this one the second one is excel sx now let's do away with the second one so now let's launch the first one and use that for that okay so here this particular sheet let's name it data the first sheet so data and then let's create another sheet here and name it settings so now let's come to the let's on the data on the settings sheet we need a name range for the gender that is male and female okay so we can just do that from here so here let's type gender sorry gender and then here let's type male and then female sorry female so once you are done select the two now go to the formula tab just click on define name yes click on define name yes choose that and then here you can give it a name gender okay perfect gender you can see that once you are done click on okay so now if you should come back and select the range again you see in the name range box here or the name box here you can see the gender the meaning is taken perfect now let's come to the data sheet so now let's define the various headings so here we have the sn of serial number then here we have the name then the, we have the gender and then we have the dob that is date of birth and then we have the staff id and then after the staff id you have the registered number so we can just name it reg number reg no that is registered number and then we also have email address and then phone number perfect there we go so now let's format them appropriately let's increase this one let's adjust this a bit let's adjust this one too open up this there we go do that for all of them just open them up have enough space to work with perfect so now let's select the column here sorry the row here on the home tab give it a very nice color here and then change the font color to whatever color you wish in white and you would want to bold it now let's change the font style to times new roman that is my favorite font so whichever font you want to change it to you can do that then you can go to center the various text perfect so everything looks good so now let's just um, format the various ranges here where the data will be kept make it look nice so let's select this up to this or wherever you would want your data captured up to it's a large database you can just go to the bottom okay so once we have that selected let's predefine our font style to maybe times new roman i would want to reduce the font size a bit to 10. so once I've, I've selected this range whatever formatting i do is going to take effect okay so i would want to center all the data that's going to be stored in here let me increase the size of the email address yeah, perfect. Great. good and then the next thing i would want to do is um, give it the conditional formatting to formats or maybe to highlight the even rules okay so to do that i'll just go to conditional formatting here i'll come to new rule then use formula to determine rule so here just type equal to then mod meaning mod and then inside they just type the rule then uh, you open and close parenthesis comma two then you close your parenthesis from here then equal to zero so with this it's going to just highlight even rules and you see what i'm talking about so we go to format then we go to border or border just 
select this and then give it start here now the fonts you would want to maintain the black fonts okay the color of the font should be black now fill come to fill effect then we choose the a deeper color here and then the second one takes lighter color and we click on okay click on okay and there we have this formatted perfectly i think this looks good so we would want the phone number column okay we can leave it that way or we would want it to take phone numbers but let's maintain it the way it is okay so now you can save your work now or just by increasing this now perfect that is okay so now that we are done with this i think um, we can then go straight to the developer tab and then begin creating our um user form so we go to developer if you don't have developer you just come to file you come to options you come to um, customize ribbon then you make sure developer is checked and then you click on okay so it should be good to go so once we are done we already have it so you click on developer tab here so here you just come to insert and go to user form then you would want to just what size it's the size you want so you can just change the caption here you can see says user form one you can change the caption from here and just call it data from three form or whatever you think you would want to use it so you can name it with that okay and then we would want to give it a name then define the name for it so that we can make reference of this name inside of our code so we call it frm data entry frm data entry so you click on just control s to save your work so once we are done with that i always use um, microsoft powerpoint to get the background image for my user form so let me show you how that is done let's minimize this and minimize that so let's just come to the desktop right click you go to new here and then let's choose microsoft powerpoint presentation you don't even need it so we're going to be deleting you just need an image out of it so here let's go to insert slide and then go for blank slide so in here what we are going to do is um, quickly insert a shape so we go to insert and then we grab a particular shape here like this oh this looks good and then just grab the shape like this here perfect so you can select the shape and give it the, the, the color you would want okay but to do it after that before that let's go to insert again and then insert our um, text box here so let's draw our text box here and then inside it let's just type data entry sorry yeah, data entry form okay or you can name it student data entry form or staff or whatever you would want to use it for so center this and let's change the font to times new roman from here and we bold it and you would want to increase the font size okay position it very well so maybe you would want to uh, italic it and then maybe underline it perfectly so i think this looks good so now let's select the shape itself and go to format and go for the fill now before that let's take off the shape outline so we go for shape outline choose no outline and from there the next thing we're going to do is uh, go for the, the color of the shape okay so you can see you can choose the color preferred color you want so i think uh, this color is going to look good here or we go for this lighter color here i think this color looks good so let's go for the shape effect here and then let's come for reflection or shadow or we go to preset and then we grab this so you can see that our shape has gotten some effects at the edge of it so you can see that right so with this we are done getting that so just right click on the shape you go to save as picture then you choose desktop then you, you click on this save as type and choose jpg because you can use png files inside of the um, um the user form so you just use jpg you can give it picture one or maybe you can name it whatever name you would want to use it let me just maintain the name so you go to save okay, it's already on the desktop so we can close this now and then save this if you wish so we have the picture from here so now what we need to do is to come back to our user form select the user form from here make sure it's selected then you come to picture you can see there is no picture you choose this then browse to the desktop and grab the picture and then you click on this so now let's come to picture size mode and go for stretch oh 
a slide we didn't save the picture by rule so you can see that the text we added didn't appear from here so let's go and resave the picture wall. let me show you where the problem started from now when we selected this it's assumed that it selected only the shape without the but if you like you can just select this one select this the the text box okay and then press and hold control and select this one the shape itself now let's go to format let's come to group and group them so it does not become one so you can just right click now go to save as picture choose jpg and then choose desktop as a destination and then save it yes let's replace it with the previous one and we can then close this so now save now this should work so now if we should go back to our project if, sorry we come for the uh, picture from here then we can take this one now so you can see that it has just taken effect here so now if you select this and then you run it you can see that the form looks good and stunning yeah. so that's how you want it if you want to make it a bit bigger than this you can still go there and change the size of it and it should be good to go so now that we are done with that we need we're going to be using calendar okay so we need to import our calendar from here inside of our project so you can see right now we have only one form which is the data entry so to do that we go to file we go to import and i'll be leaving all the files the, the codes and everything in the video description below so you can just check and get all the codes in the video description so once we are done with that um let's just go to the desktop so i have the folder on the desktop if we have this practice files so i'll be leaving this folder for you so you go for the calendar and choose the calendar and then click on open so you can see now we have the calendar inside the project here so we can view the calendar from here okay. we'll be using it in our project so now let's go to our form now let's get our various um, text boxes I mean, let's, see. let's grab our various text boxes so to start with let's get the label so we'll grab the first label here let's give it this way so with this label let's see if it's okay so now it's okay for us now let's um go for the back style then let's make it transparent so that it takes the color of the background then we go for the border style then we give it single line so that it has this single line border around it so now let's select the shape uh, the label and format it so that when we create copies of it they all take the same formatting let's go to font here we would want to bold it then give it times new roman then the size should be probably nine then we click on okay i think this looks good so we can then change the label to maybe id then control c so copy control v to paste this and then if it's exactly here then control c control v just control v to again we get another extra two and then another two so one after selecting the first one press and hold control on the keyboard and select the rest now control c and control v so it gets this one two and this place them here to increase our productivity so now once we add them we can then change this one to um, that is name so we change it from here Here we have gender. Then we have this. Then ID. Let me command the ID wall. We give it a colon. Then here we have the date of birth. Uh, it will be it will be as well. And then here we should have staff ID. And then here we should have registered number. So REG. Once we are done with that, the next thing we need is our various text box. So now let's select this and move them back a bit. And this looks okay. Now let's grab our various text boxes and let's get this. So get our first text box here. Let's draw it after the size. And this is okay. So now let's select this and format it before we create copies of it. Okay, let's give it a 
single line border perfect select it let's go to font and define the font before we create copy so let's we want to bold the text inside and then give it times new roman and then the font size should be 10. so let's debug it and see so this is how it's going to look like perfect so now we can create copy for this so let's select this control c control v The next one we need here is going to be a combo box because we're going to be choosing between two things that is either male or female that is for the gender okay so to do that let's quickly grab this and get this oh, sorry that is this combo box here perfect so let's select it and format it just as we did to the text box some borderline and then um let's go for the font that's the roman we want to bold it and then the size should be 10. so now when you select this um select the combo box and then come to the properties panel here then at the row source here you choose you just type gender the gender we use as the name ring if you remember on the settings sheet let me just show that to you let's run it and then let's see this so you can see you can choose male you can choose female from here let me show you that it's from here so this is it perfect good so now let's copy our text boxes now i've just select and control c now control v to paste this here so now i would want to rename this text box now i should have this as text box one text box two this should be my text box away but it's combo box one so i'm maintaining it like that the name this should be my text box four so i'm changing it to text box four so we just change this to four perfect so that it makes sense when we are writing the code so that you can be able to know the various position and then the, the, the various text boxes so control c control v this should be text box 5 from here sorry let me just um, drag this and paste it also here control c control v and then there we go select this press and hold control on the keyboard and select the second one control c control v so now let's locate the text box so this is five this is six this is seven so let's drag this one seven here and this is eight perfect so let's open up here a bit now let's get uh, the image control for the image the passport okay so let's grab that here and that is okay here so now we can begin adding our various buttons command buttons so now let's grab the first one let's just draw it like this this approach so perfect so now let's go for the uh, back style and make it transparent so that it also takes the color of this so now let's select it let's decrease the size a bit now let's go let's format it before we go ahead and create copies of it right um let's change this to um, save slash add okay save slash or maybe add slash save add save so now let's select it let's go to um font group okay from there you go here we we'll want to bold it and then times new roman and then i think this nice okay and then there you go so now you can then create copies of it control c control v Control C, Control V. Let's add another one. Let me create copies of the four. Okay. So now let's select this. Select, select. Press Control on the keyboard after selecting the first one, so that I can select the rest. Control C, Control V. So now we have additional four. We need all of them. Okay. So don't worry. Perfect. So let's begin changing their names now. So this one is going to be um, that is an update. Updates. This is going to be delete. This is going to be search. And then this is going to be reset. This is going to be close. This is going to be add photo. Perfect. So 
this one just move here and here so you can delete this one okay, delete it so you can just reassemble this one so this one should be here you can come down a bit and update and delete and the set should be here so let's select the tree and bring them down a bit once again that is okay so now let's make a copy of this Xbox here, Control C, Control V. Let's position it all here. Now let's put the search box here. So that whatever we enter here, you can set it by clicking on this. So let's go for always set and close. Always set should be here. And then close should be here. So now let's check the interval so that it looks good. So now let's select this. Press and hold control while selecting this, and then let's move them a bit so that the various sides looks okay. Is this side is bigger? Okay, I think this looks good. So now let's debug our form and see what's happening there. Perfect, everything looks good. So we can then um, let's reduce the font size here so that it can show the complete text. Let's send it back to 8. I think this looks good. Perfect. Now, the next thing we need to do is um, we're going to add calendar. So now, and the calendar is going to be here. So to do that, let's sel select the image and control and then draw this here. So now let's select this and insert a picture. I'll be sharing all those things in the description below for you to go ahead and use. So let's go for the picture from here. Let's go to drive and then um, it comes here so I choose this perfect so now let's come to the um, picture size mode and choose stretch so this is our calendar we need another button here for the generation of the ID okay so let's reduce this one here a bit perfect yes now let's create a copy of this button control C control V Keep it here and reduce the size. So now let's come here and rename this gen ID. We need generate ID. Perfect. That is okay. So now let's define the various IDs of the what we just added here. That is add save and then update. Those are just the captions. Okay, we need to give them specific names so that we can quickly identify them at the back end in the code. So to do that change the id so here we call this one cmd sorry cmd add okay cmd add and then select this one cmd um update and then here cmd delete and then here cmd search and then here um cmd reset and then here cmd close okay and then here and here let's name it cmd add photo perfect so that is that it's not compulsory that you should name it like that. i can give it a specific name that you can quickly identify it at the back end okay so now that we are done i think we can now start with the calendar so to start with let's just double click on this calendar here we've already imported the calendar so now we need to bring it here so double click on this so now from the underscore here select this and make sure you select only where i've just selected and then remove it and then choose this type click and then open and close parentheses meaning that when that button is clicked that is the image button i'm going to change the name let's come back here let's select this one it's called image 2 i don't want that to happen i would want to be able to identify it in my code so let me give it a specific name that is those are some of the good practices so let me call it cow icon meaning calendar icon for short so now let me double click it again so you can see that it has given me a different sub procedure let me delete the first one here 
So the what I want to do is to select this and then remove it and then just click and open and close parentheses. There you go. So meaning once the button is clicked, something should happen. So once that button is clicked, I would want to call the calendar because I already have the calendar imported inside the project. So I'll just say call calendar dot. And you see the various methods under the calendar that you can access dot selected date inside the parentheses. Now let's see where the text box which the date is going to be stored. It's going to be text box four. Okay, so text box four. So let's go back. inside here so selected in then text box four okay so we close this so now if we should run our form and then grab this and choose this so you can see that we have our date of birth inside this so you can change the date of birth and there we go that is working perfect now the next thing we need is our id generation the button here so now let's quickly minute please Now let's quickly double click on this one okay we didn't give it a name so let's clear this and let's go back to our user form so you can switch between the codes and then the user form so when i click on this i have the form when i go here i have the codes so let me clear this one and be on the user form okay so this one let's select it and let's give it a name um cmd uh gen meaning generate id cmd gen id generate id for sure so that is the name so we've given it a unique name so now let's quickly double click on this okay so once we are done with that the next thing we need to do is get the codes so now i've already populated the codes type in with this delay and prolong the video so i'm just going to copy and paste and explain to you how these codes actually work so i'll share this folder with you in the video description below so we start with to get this one up and running <laughs> so this is the code for the i've just named you can see i've just given them the various comments here to show you that this code is for this so this one is for generate random id so let's select this one here i've already created a sub procedure so you forget of the private sub gen uh, blah blah forget of this ones and then choose just select what is in between the sub procedures control c to copy this and then come back inside here then control v to paste okay so we can give it a comment here so a comment is a line of code that is not executed when you run your program because it is just for a, a developer to be able to know what a line of code is doing okay so we can just call it a random id generation ID generation random ID generation perfect so now once we are done with that so now let's go through this and let's see what, what I'm talking about here so first of all inside the sub procedure we are just dimensioning say dim random ID is this a variable name as a string we are de defining it as a string data type and they would want to initialize and define another one that is k it's come you can use any names for this you can use any letter for this as well they are just variables dim k as what an integer so what we are going to do here is that we would want to generate a random id between one to six that is random numbers between one to six so we've just declared so we're going to loop through the various codes some number of times that is from one to six times and each iteration a particular number is generated and so we get the six numbers for the id so that is why we are setting the random id variable here is equal to the random id the first number that we generated would want to concatenate it toward this c string function this c string function convert a value to a string okay it's going to convert a value to a string whatever value you're going to generate between uh, 0 to 9 because the random numbers are going to be from 0 to 9 so whatever number you're going to generate from 0 to 9 should be a string okay so we have just convert that and also this is another function called int and that number is also going to be converted into an integer as well okay and finally we have the run function that is the random function the ra the rnd the random function and what that one does is that it returns a random number between zero to one okay it returns a random number between zero to one so in each iteration a random number is generated between this series of codes here and then in the second iteration another one is generated third iteration up to six times that is why we are looking from one to six if you want to generate seven numbers 
then change this to 7. If you want to generate 8 numbers, change this to 8. If you want to generate 10 numbers, then change this to 10. Okay, but we go from 1 to 9 so that we can have uh, that range. Okay, because um, that is how the range should be so that you have up to um, a certain number. But if you want to even exceed that, you can still go ahead and then generate the number of digits you would want. So we are going from 1 to 6. So once that particular series of numbers are generated, the next thing we are going to do is that once we get up to six digits, meaning that our number is generated. So what we need to do is to display the number inside the text box. And the text box inside where the number is going to be, be displayed is the text box five. Let's confirm that. Click inside, you can see this is text box five. So when we click on this, it will generate the number and then keep it inside this text box five. But you can see that I said text box five dot text, meaning the number inside the text box five should be equal to Ideally, it should be equal to the random ID. Let me remove this one, the S ID, and show you something. The number that is going to be generated should be equal to the number that is generated and stored, the random number that is generated here and stored inside this variable, okay? So that is how it works. So that number is going to be stored inside the text box file. Let's run this and click on this. So you can see we have this. It's generating. So you can see that it's generating six digit numbers. So that is what we wanted. So now let me show you something here. What I did was that I tried to prefix with some three um, um, letters to start with, okay? Something like SID, meaning staff ID. If yours is going to be a student, you can start with something like STD, meaning student ID. And in that case, that STD is going to be concatenated towards the random ID. And that was why I did this is equal to text was five dot text is equal to, then I open my parenthesis and then define SID. I did that and then close it. And I would want to concatenate it using the ampersand and then concatenate it towards the random ID. So this SID is going to be added to this. If yours is S, uh, student, then you can make it uh, STD, meaning student. Whatever you test you would want to append to the generated random numbers, you can do that. So now let's click on this and let's generate it. Sorry. Let's run this code now. And let's click on this so you can see that it's what SID 7555 whatever so now if we should go and change this SID to STD it will now become STD today so basically that is how we generate our random numbers it's very simple and straightforward so now we are done with that so now the next thing we need to do is to take care of our picture addition of the picture so we would want it in a way that once you click on this button then you it will open the file explorer you choose an image and then you have the image displayed here and then when you click on save button you should have that picture saved but to do that we need to create a particular folder where that picture is going to be stored so just like how other softwares out there work when you install a particular software in pc the software goes ahead to create some folders subfolders inside the c drive or some locations on your pc and have certain files stored inside the, the those folders so the same thing is going to happen here so you as a developer you need to define a specific place where you want all those folders to be created and have them store the, the images stored inside it so whenever you want the images you can quickly return them and use them for whatever purpose you intend to use them for so to do that we're going to use this very simple line of code to create our folders and i'm going to show you how that works okay so now let me just assume, okay, that is okay. Um, why don't we assume that what we are creating here is a student um, ID, sorry, student data entry form. Okay, so that we just convert it to the student, but let's maintain this to the start. Let me show you something. Let's quickly double click on the user form here. And once you double click, you see this private sub user form click. So now let's click on this drop down arrow and choose initialize. Initialize means that whenever the user form runs or it's open something should happen so whatever codes we're going to be enter that we're going to enter in between this sub procedure is going to take effect once the user form initializes what do we mean by initialization of the user form once i run a user form like this meaning it's initialized so once we it runs like that the actions all what we're going to be keeping inside here is going to take effect now what we want once the user form is initialized let me show you that we would want to create a folder so to do that let's come for this let's select all these codes inside the user form initialize ctrl c to copy this 
and then minimize this and then um, let's come inside here and then control v to paste so we want a lot of actions to get to perform once the user form is initialized please and um, remove this one it's the same as what i have so you can see that i mistakenly copied the sub procedure the sub procedure the private sub so it should be one so let's start with the first line of code and for you to understand once the user form is initialized we would want to have something displayed inside the text box one and that is why we said what text box one is equal to application dot worksheet function dot max the worksheet function dot max is actually an operation that takes a number and then adds another number to it okay so this function is going to is going to look through the first column okay the sheet one the sheet we are going to use we are using here the data sheet this particular sheet data sheet when you go to the vb properties here you can see that the data sheet is a sheet one so that is what we are making reference to the range a through to a the a through to a is the first column here the first column here this is what we are talking about a through to a that is see this is b through to b c through to c so this is a through to a let's go back so sheet one dot that range the first column is going to pick the first number and then append then add one to it and then have that number displayed inside the text box so right now when you go to our um the, the first column here you can see we don't have any number so meaning here is zero so meaning in the text box one the number we're going to have inside the text box one is one because it's assumed that this is zero and then it will add one to the zero to make it one so there is no number here supposing there is one here then in the text box one when the user form is initialized it's going to be two so don't forget of that take note of that so now that is zero it's going to be one and i'll show you that let's go back here let me comment these quotes out here so this is our comment it wouldn't run again so now let me show you something once i run this particular user form check and see what is going to happen inside sorry inside this text box for me this text box so check so let's run it and see so you can see that inside the text box we have one we want to do auto counting we don't want to be entering the id one two three this one is just to count the number of data the number of people we have in the database it's not actually the unique ids we're going to be generating the unique ids from here so don't forget of that okay so this is taking care of that and we will see how we can use that but this particular one is just to do the counting so that once you just scroll to the bottom you'll be able to see the number and know that oh, oh we have thousand people inside of the database so this is doing auto counting so now if i should go back to this data sheet here and change insert one here when i initialize the form here is going to be two let's confirm that so here let me change this to one look at something here let's run this so you can see this is two because there is one here so it will add one to it and then we get that so now i believe you understand what actually is going on here and i like that perfect let's proceed let's go to the user form now on error resume this meaning if there is an error ignore the error and then proceed because any error that will come out from this is just nonsense it doesn't make sense so we want to ignore that error and move to the next line so the next line of action is that once the user form is initialized again after doing what we ask it to do from the first line of code and then um, jumping the error from here we would want it to make a directory this m mkdir mean make a directory meaning create a folder create a folder so why should that folder be created whenever you see mkdir meaning make directory create a folder and specify why you want the folder to be created there is no doubt that all our windows pc all have c drives okay c drives and some to have c and d and e f and all that that is because they partition their drives but by default each and every pc has c drive so you would want to you would want the folder to be created in c drive if you say d drive and the person that is running your application doesn't have d drive or doesn't partition the the what's the name the drive meaning there wouldn't be d drive and this might throw an error here meaning it will be able to create that directory and those pictures wouldn't get a place to stay so basically that is what is happening there so we use c drive because all windows pc have c drive so we use c drive so we'd want to make a directory inside the c drive now let's navigate straight to the c drive let's come here i promise this video not to be too long but it will end up being long sorry about that i need to explain for you to understand you can see that i have a folder called teachers data this when i was trying you can see i have all these images here so i'm going to delete this folder for you to see something let me delete it 
now it's now deleted with all the pictures it's gone so confirm you can see there is no folder like that so now once the user form is initialized i would want that folder to be created call so let me un uncomment it and then uncomment this one i would want that folder to be created in a c drive semicolon sorry that is colon and then backslash the name of the folder should be called teachers data and inside that teachers data folder i would want to create another subfolder called photos so this folder is going to be created in a C drive called teachers data and the next line here means that inside this teacher, uh, teachers data folder I would want to create another folder called photos so whatever name you would want to give to your folder define that name here okay it's not always teachers data you can change the student data or whatever data you would want it depends on the program you are you are developing okay so basically that is that now let's confirm our C drive once again there is no folder called teachers data now let's go and then initialize our form and then check our C drive now. Let's run the form. So now let's go back. Let's close the form and go back to the C drive. So you can see this is the folder called teachers data. So when we open it, we have another folder called photos. So for now we haven't entered anything, so there was nothing. If you should go back and change the names of the name of that particular folder, it's going to also take effect from here. Perfectly. So I believe you understand. So our pictures that we're going to be using inside the user form are going to be stored inside this folder as you saw me deleting some of them so perfect so we are done with that as well so now the next thing is to click on this button to add a picture so to do that let's go to our source code to add photo so this one so select from here up to here control c to copy minimize it so double click on this one to here so here I select here and then go down give it a comment add photos so that the next time we come back you know that this particular sub procedure is for adding photos so control v to paste this so once you paste this quickly let's look at what is happening here we are just going to use once the button is clicked you can see the add photo on click meaning when the button is clicked something should happen we are dimensioning a variable x as an integer you can use any letter here it's application dot file dialog ms mso file dialog open dot or dot allow multi select equal to false so when we click this particular button what is going to happen is that it's going to open a file dialog box where we can choose an image file and then what we are doing here is that there are some properties of methods that we can define on this file dialog open and that is that multiple selection there are some instances there are some programs you realize that when you open that file dialog box that file dialog box you can select multiple files and click open and have them imported inside where you want to import them but in this case, we just need one image, so we don't allow multiple selection. So we set that to be false. So now the X we initialize says what? X equal to application dot file dialog MSO file dialog open dot show. So we want that particular file dialog box to show so that we can do the selection. Okay. If X is not equal to zero, meaning if X is not equal, meaning if a file is selected, meaning at that moment X is not equal to zero, then F file now we need to define a global variable here so we say dim here so we say dim um f path okay let me just give it a capital letters f path as string meaning the file path we want to dimension that file path f path as string it's just the name of a variable so if this is not f path for you or whatever name you use here make sure you refer that here so that f path that is the file path is equal to application dot file dialog mso file dialog open dot selected items the item the number of items we want, we want to get selected is just one item and once that item is selected it's going to be assigned to a control core image one on the user form this is the image one this one when you select it check here you can see it's image one perfect so that image one the picture the picture of it is equal to what the load picture the picture which has been loaded from the selection and then once the picture is loaded it will just be inserted inside the image control without any direction so we would want to just make it have it fixed inside it so we say image one dot passport sorry dot picture size mode equal to one we just want it to appear once and then have it displayed correctly just as how we display passport image if you comment this line out the image will be displayed and you might not see the head of the human being so to make it fit the image control we use this property that is picture size mode and then we set it to one and then we have it fixed inside
so now let's run the file sorry the program in cc so when we click on this now you can then browse and go to uh, let's just browse this one here and then let's go to databases here yeah? and let's go to passport images so let me, let me just grab this image here so you can see that the image is in here without any problem without any stress so basically that is that the image is ready perfect so now let's um, start with our controls that is the save update delete search reset close but like i said this video is going to be in section so this covers the first section i don't want the video to be too long so i've taken my time to explain for you to understand if i continue from here i might get tired and you might not understand the rest so let's end this video here and then we proceed in the next lesson where we can add the various codes for add update delete search reset close so then please if you like this video don't forget to smash the like button please subscribe subscribe to the channel press the bell icon so i get notified once our videos are uploaded it's going to be fun i'm going to make sure i explain everything for you to understand so by the end of this you should be able to develop any complex data entry form using ms excel bba all by yourself you can use all the codes that i'm going to share with you in the video link description below you can you can you can make copies of those codes to expand the, the user form you would want to create and i'll show you how to do that so till our next lesson thank you so much for watching and bye for now